Do you want to know the shocking truth behind the two-stroke engine ban? Well, stick around. We're about to pull back the curtain on one of the most hotly debated topics in the boating world, the mighty two-stroke engine. Did you know these beloved engines are outlawed in several places worldwide? Are they truly the terrible environmental villains some claim, or is there a hidden side to this sensational story? You're about to find out, and I guarantee you'll be amazed by some of the facts we uncover, because what you've heard so far might only be half the story. Before we tackle the heavy stuff, let's rewind and appreciate the humble beginnings of two-stroke engines. The concept emerged in the late 19th century, with pioneers like Dougald Clerk and Joseph Day refining the basic design. By the early 20th century, two-stroke engines were powering everything from motorcycles to lawnmowers, and of course, our beloved outboard boat motors. What made them so popular in boating circles? Simplicity. In a two-stroke engine, each upstroke and downstroke counts as a single cycle. The piston goes up, drawing in the fuel-air mixture, and then goes down, compressing and igniting it. This means fewer moving parts compared to a traditional four-stroke engine, making two strokes relatively lightweight, cost-effective, and mechanically straightforward to maintain. For decades, anyone looking for a powerful, low-hassle experience on the water turned to these engines. When your top priority was torque, quick acceleration, and an engine that didn't require an engineering PhD to repair, the two-stroke was the star. Fast forward to the boom of recreational boating in the mid-20th century, and you'll find two-stroke outboards flying off the shelves. They symbolized freedom on the water, a promise that you could hit the lake, zip around with your friends or family, and handle minor repairs on your own. Unfortunately, that convenience came at a cost. Traditional carburetted two-strokes weren't exactly known for their squeaky clean emissions, and when the environment started climbing the priority ladder in the late 20th century, that's when the real trouble began for these iconic motors. Yet if we step back, it's essential to recognize these engines as mechanical marvels in their own right. Their high power-to-weight ratio, iconic sound, some might call it music to their ears, and simplicity still make them fan favorites. The question is whether modern technology can help them meet stricter environmental standards, or if the bands we see in many regions are here to stay. If you're enjoying this deep dive into two-stroke history and want more insightful content on boating technology and classic engines, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing right now. By doing so, you won't miss our upcoming episodes, where we'll explore wild stories of banned boats, futuristic electric outboards, and maybe even some tips on how to keep those older motors running flawlessly. You might have heard that two-stroke outboards are banned because they emit more pollutants than their four-stroke or direct-injected counterparts. That's partially true, but it's far from the complete picture. Standard carburetted two-stroke engines do indeed burn fuel less efficiently and produce more exhaust emissions, particularly hydrocarbons. These can lead to water and air pollution, which is something environmental agencies worldwide have been trying to cut down on for decades. A key contributor is the way older two-stroke engines mix their oil and fuel. The oil, intended for lubrication, ends up getting partially burned off in the combustion cycle, then exits through the exhaust. This not only affects air quality, but can leave an oily residue in the water, potentially harming aquatic life. Government bodies like the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, in the United States started paying attention to these issues as early as the 1970s, but it wasn't until the 1990s and early 2000s that more rigorous regulations took shape. Also, some bans have economic underpinnings. Four-stroke engines and newer direct-injection two-strokes, often labeled as clean two-strokes or low-emission two-strokes, can be more expensive initially, but they often burn less fuel overall. This jump in complexity and cost also benefited certain engine manufacturers who led the market in newer technology, effectively tilting the playing field away from older two-stroke designs. Whether we like it or not, financial interests can and do shape environmental policy, but the real kicker is that many modern two-stroke engines those that employ direct fuel injection DFI systems are significantly cleaner than older carburetted models. In fact, some DFI two-stroke engines can meet and sometimes exceed stringent emission standards set for outboard motors. It's an eye-opener that not every two-stroke is an oily monster, yet blanket bands in certain places lump all two-strokes into a single category, leaving even the clean technologies out in the cold. 
two strokes, especially the old school ones have a reputation for producing smoke and leaking a small amount of unburned fuel into the water. That's the core issue driving many of these bands. The extra hydrocarbons aren't great for aquatic ecosystems, and the smoky exhaust has been criticized by health organizations. But what the critics often overlook is that not all two strokes are created equal. Many boaters, particularly older generations, maintained their engines meticulously, used high-quality oil, and tuned their engines to run as cleanly as possible. The difference between a well-maintained two-stroke and a neglected one is night and day. Surprisingly, if you compare a well-tuned modern two-stroke with direct injection to a standard four-stroke, the emissions gap can be minimal. Sometimes modern two-strokes boast better torque curves and can run more efficiently at certain RPM ranges. This nuance is lost when governments or local municipalities impose sweeping prohibitions without distinction. From a purely environmental standpoint, some argue that building entirely new four-stroke engines, shipping them worldwide, and then discarding old engines can have its own ecological footprint. How do we weigh the cost of producing thousands of new motors against letting older, but still functional, two-strokes remain in use, especially if they're maintained properly? This question sparks heated debates in boating forums and local council meetings alike, showing that the situation can be more complex than two strokes equals bad, four strokes equals good. Now let's get specific. In the United States, bans on carbureted two-stroke engines aren't uniform across the entire country. Instead, you'll find that some states, counties, or even individual lakes have put restrictions in place. California is notorious for having stringent air quality regulations. Certain waterways in the Golden State have either partial or total bans on older two-stroke engines. Lake Tahoe, for instance, has strict regulations due to concerns about preserving water clarity. Meanwhile, other states are more lenient. In many parts of the Midwest, you might still see older two-strokes happily zipping along the local rivers and lakes, especially if they meet certain emissions criteria or horsepower limits. On the East Coast, places like New York have begun to consider more restrictive measures for high-traffic waterways, but you'll still find pockets where two-strokes are common. Internationally, countries like Australia have implemented tough laws on older two-strokes, especially in environmentally sensitive areas like the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Over in Europe, the European Union has strict emission standards, effectively discouraging new sales of older tech two-strokes, though existing engines are often grandfathered in. And in Asia, it can be a mixed bag, with some countries imposing strict regulations in certain regions while allowing more freedom in others. This patchwork of regulations can be confusing, especially for traveling boaters who like to tow their vessels across state lines or even around the world. Some folks have found themselves slapped with hefty fines, or worse yet, refused entry to local waterways simply because they didn't know the rules had changed. It's a good reminder to always check local regulations before you launch. And yes, that's a direct invitation to do your homework if you plan on taking your beloved two-stroke engine to new territory. If you're appreciating the clarity we're providing on these ever-changing rules and want to keep up to date with the latest boating regulations, lawsuits, and insider tips, don't forget to share this video with fellow boaters and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We've got plenty more in store, including the details on that epic court showdown I mentioned earlier. It's time to jump into the meat of the drama. One of the most talked about legal confrontations involving two-stroke engines happened in a small lakeside community in Northern California. Yep, the same region known for strict environmental laws. The local government decided to ban all two-stroke engines, across the board, without making any distinction between newer, cleaner technologies and older carburetted models. A group of local boaters, many of whom had spent good money on new direct injection outboards that supposedly met California's emission standards, sued the county. They argued that the ban was too broad, ignored existing environmental regulations that distinguished between clean and dirty two-strokes, and would result in financial harm for those who upgraded responsibly. For months, the case bounced around the court system. During the trial, independent environmental experts testified that not all two-strokes are created equal, and that modern DFI engines could meet or exceed current state regulations. Meanwhile, the county insisted that a blanket ban was simpler to enforce and would guarantee cleaner waters. In a twist that stunned many, the judge initially sided with the boaters, saying the ban was indeed too broad. But an appeals court later ruled that municipalities had the right to impose stricter regulations if they felt it was necessary to protect local waterways. The final outcome led to a partial compromise. 
Direct injection two-strokes were allowed under certain conditions, but older carbureted models were still fully banned. The case stands as a prominent example of how complex and emotional these battles can become, and it highlights the challenges of legislating technology when that technology is evolving at a rapid pace. Another notable controversy occurred on Lake Constance, which borders Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Each country had slightly different rules regarding emissions and engine use, leading to confusion for boaters who crossed invisible boundary lines on the water. Locals joked that you'd need a manual the size of the phone book to navigate legally. Despite the frustration, the chaos eventually prompted more harmonized regulations, albeit ones that heavily discouraged older two-strokes. And let's not forget the controversy surrounding how enforcement actually plays out. Some lakes post no two-stroke signs, yet rarely ticket offenders, while others are downright militant, with patrol boats stopping anyone who so much as looks like they're running a two-stroke motor. This inconsistency only adds fuel to the fire for those who believe the bans are arbitrary or unfairly enforced. One pressing question for two-stroke enthusiasts is whether these bans are just the start of a broader movement to eliminate older technologies. Given the global push for cleaner energy and the popularity of electric propulsion in smaller craft, it's not hard to imagine a future where even four-stroke gas engines come under increased scrutiny. Indeed, some environmental groups are actively campaigning to phase out combustion engines altogether in certain sensitive lakes or marine sanctuaries. In the United States, the EPA's regulations are already pushing the marine industry toward cleaner technologies. Emission standards have gradually tightened, and manufacturers are adapting. Companies like Evinrud, before they wound down production, use advanced direct injection systems, while Mercury and Yamaha have been refining four-stroke designs that boast better fuel economy and reduced emissions. For governments and environmental organizations, it's a relatively straightforward equation. Keep pushing for lower emissions until the point where the cleanest technologies become the de facto standard. But is a global outright ban likely in the near future? Possibly not. The marine sector has different challenges compared to automobiles. Boats are used far less frequently, and the cost of completely replacing older fleets is high. Additionally, the specialized nature of commercial fishing, offshore operations, and other marine activities means that quick transitions aren't always feasible. So, while you might see more local bans, especially in popular recreational areas, a sweeping international ban on all two-strokes is still a distant prospect, though not impossible. For many boating enthusiasts, especially those who grew up on the ear-splitting roar of a two-stroke, the ban feels like a personal attack. That might sound dramatic, but boating is an emotional hobby. People form memories, traditions, and even identities around their time on the water. The older generation remembers tinkering on the dock, patching up leaky fuel lines, and pulling that starter rope a half dozen times until the engine finally sputtered to life. Banning two strokes isn't just about emissions. For some, it's about erasing a piece of cultural heritage. And that's precisely why we see organized efforts to roll back or modify these bans. Some community-led initiatives petition local councils to adopt more nuanced rules distinguishing older carburetted engines from newer direct injection ones, or allowing two-stroke use during off-peak seasons when the waterways aren't crowded. Others push for rigorous testing programs so that only heavily polluting engines are restricted rather than all two-strokes. There's also a growing movement to retrofit older engines with cleaner technologies. Some aftermarket kits promise to reduce emissions significantly, though the results vary. If these kits become widely available and gain official approval, they could represent a compromise that satisfies both environmental concerns and the nostalgic cravings of two-stroke fans. At the end of the day, whether bans get reversed depends on a blend of public pressure, legal battles, and technological improvements. It's a balancing act. Nobody wants to turn local lakes into oily soup, but many also believe a well-maintained modern two-stroke poses minimal risk. If these voices grow louder and the evidence supports them, we might see a gradual easing of restrictions in certain locales, but don't expect an overnight revolution. It's hard to deny the allure of a two-stroke engine. The simplicity, the unmistakable sound, the power-to-weight ratio, there's a reason people become die-hard fans. For many boaters, it's more than a machine. It's a piece of living history that still has a place on today's waterways. 
The frustration comes when blanket bands paint all two strokes with the same brush, ignoring modern variants that are cleaner, quieter, and arguably just as eco-friendly as their four-stroke cousins. Still, not everyone is convinced they deserve a spot in the future. Critics point out that even the best two-strokes, while improved, may never be as consistently clean as the average four-stroke. Then there's the question of noise pollution. For some, the characteristic buzz of a two-stroke is an annoyance that disturbs the peace, especially in tranquil fishing spots or nature reserves. Meanwhile, technological advancements in electric outboards continue at a startling pace, with more range, power, and faster charging times each year. If an electric motor can do the same job without any emissions, do we really need to cling to fossil fuel engines of any kind? The answer might lie somewhere in between, if we can maintain a clear distinction between the truly polluting engines and those that meet modern standards, we can preserve an important piece of boating culture without compromising the environment. Maybe the future includes well-regulated use of direct injection two-strokes and carefully controlled areas for older classics to sail. Somewhat like vintage car clubs on designated show days, for many, that would be the best of both worlds. So there you have it, the shocking truth behind boating banned two-stroke engines. We've seen that the story is complex, filled with historical charm, mechanical marvels, environmental concerns, legal wrangling, and emotional community battles. It's more than just a good engine versus a bad engine, it's a microcosm of how we grapple with technological progress cultural nostalgia, and environmental responsibility all at once. On the one hand, regulatory bodies worldwide have legitimate reasons to rein in polluting technologies and preserve our lakes and oceans for future generations. On the other, dedicated boaters argue that modern two-strokes aren't the smoke-belching terrors they once were, and that the real solution lies in refinement, not eradication. Court cases have revealed how intricate and passionate this debate can become, and they've also shown that compromise is possible. In some places, direct injection two-strokes have carved out a legal path forward, proving they can coexist with stringent environmental standards. Will the ban spread further, tightening their grip on two-stroke enthusiasts, or will public pressure and technological innovation lead to a renaissance of cleaner, more efficient two-strokes? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the debate isn't going away anytime soon. For many, the two-stroke engine isn't just about propulsion. It's a symbol of freedom, heritage, and mechanical simplicity in a world that's becoming more complicated every day. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the ups and downs of two-stroke engines and their controversial bands. If you found this video helpful, interesting, or just plain entertaining, please like, share, and of course, subscribe to our channel. We'll keep bringing you the latest in boating insights, product breakdowns, and that perfect blend of informative yet conversational content that you've come to expect from us. We'll catch you next time. Until then, happy boating and keep those engines humming, whatever type they may be.